All right, the video you have been waiting for. This is the last and final video in the course, and now we're going to gain shell. So here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna use a tool called MSF Venom, and we're gonna use that to generate shell code. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste the command over, and then we'll talk about what this command does. So we're running MSF Venom, it's brought to you by Metasploit, and we're gonna set a switch of P for payload. So we're gonna set the payload for Windows because we're attacking a Windows machine, and we're gonna do a shell reverse TCP. So we didn't declare x64 here, so we're gonna assume x86, but we'll declare that later just in case. So when we have a reverse shell like this, what we're doing is we're having the victim connect back to us. So we need to provide our information. So by our information, I mean the Kali machine IP address, which is gonna be our L host right here. And then we're gonna also have a port we're gonna be listening on. So that's gonna be our L port, our listening port. And we're gonna declare that as 4444. I'm setting an exit func equal to thread. All that does is make our exploit a little bit more stable. We have a dash F for file type. We're gonna export this into C. A dash A for architecture, that's x86. And then a dash B for bad characters. Here's where finding the bad characters becomes important. So we didn't have any besides the null byte, but it's always good to teach it and explain why it would be important later. So if we had any bad characters, this is where we would put them in. So let's go ahead and just hit enter here. And it'll take just a second to generate this shell code. And once it does, we're gonna copy and paste it into our Python script that we've been using. So we're gonna grab this information here. We don't need the semicolon. And it's always good to take note of the payload size. So it's not gonna to matter too much for us, but if you do go into exploit development, payload size can be everything. It could be that you're working with a very limited space. Say you only have 200 bytes left and a payload size of 351 is just not gonna work because you're gonna truncate it at 200. So always good to note the payload size, especially as you dive deeper into other projects uh, if you do go farther into exploit development. So let's go ahead now and open up our Python script we've been using. So I'm still on 2.py. And I'm gonna declare a new variable here up at the top. We're just gonna call this overflow, set it equal to this. I'm gonna add a parenthesis, hit enter, and then add a closing parenthesis like that. So what we're also gonna do is we're gonna come down here and we're going to add in overflow and then we're gonna talk about this. So what we've got here is we've got the shell code, right? So what's gonna happen is we're gonna submit the shell code and this variable shell code here, we're gonna say, okay, 2003 bytes, that gets us to the EIP. When we get to the EIP, we're gonna hit this pointer address, right? This pointer address is just a jump address. So we're gonna to jump to this set of instructions that we provide. The set of instructions we're providing is this overflow here. So what we need to do before we submit this overflow is actually insert something else. And those are called NOPs. So it's gonna look something like this. So it's called X90 like this. And we're just gonna add 32 in. And so NOPs are padding essentially. They stand for no operation. If you've ever heard of something called a NOP sled, that's kind of what it's referring to. Um, so when we have something like this, what we're doing is we're just adding a little bit of pad space in between this jump command and this overflow shell code, right? So in an instance, if we didn't have this, it's possible that our overflow wouldn't actually work. We wouldn't get com command execution on the computer because something interfered here. So we just like to add a little bit of padding in between these two, and that makes it a little bit more safe. Again, if you have a limited space, say we go back to the 200 byte example, you might really need a little bit of padding, like eight bytes, 16 bytes. You have to play around with it and figure it out. So a lot of exploit development is just messing around with the exploit until something works. So we're gonna go ahead and just save this now. Okay, and then on another tab over here, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna set up netcat to listen. So it's gonna be NVLP like this. And then I'm gonna put the port to all fours because that's what we declared in our shellcode generation. Okay, lastly, what we need to do is we need to run Voln server as administrator. We don't have to have it in immunity this time. All we have to do is just make sure it's running. And then we're gonna fire off this guy. So we're gonna say 2.py, hit enter, check this over here, 
and look at that, we've got a shell. So now we are on this computer. We could say, who am I? Okay, it's Heath, Heath is me, that's the administrator. Perfect, we are good to go. So we have gone from fuzzing a program, spiking a program, not knowing anything about the program, finding the vulnerable trun command. We use that to fuzz it. We found and controlled the EIP. We found some bad characters. We found the right module, generated some shell code, and now here we are, we are at root. So hopefully this has been easy for you. Uh, my recommendation is to go through and make notes again, try to understand the theory behind what's happening, and also try to understand everything that's going on. Um, this is as basic and simple as uh, overflow can get. Of course, there are memory protections. It's not generally this easy. This is just meant to teach people how buffer overflows work. So I really, really hope you enjoyed this series. If you did, please do subscribe. Please share with a friend. If you want to hang out, we do have a Discord channel down below. You can check that in the description. Come join it. The invite will always work. Um, please do follow me on Twitter if you want to chat. Uh, if you want to follow me, that would be awesome. I'll follow you back. And if you did like this and you want to support me, I do have a Patreon page. Um, this is not easy to do. It's very time-consuming making these videos. It's very expensive with the equipment, being professional equipment, soundboard, microphone, etc. So every little penny helps. Uh, editing software is expensive. You know, I really want to provide back. Um, so if, if you guys liked it and you have some extra money laying around that you could chip in, even a dollar goes a long way. So I really do appreciate you watching this course and I hope that you found it valuable and can share it with others. So until next time, I am the Cyber Mentor. Thank you for joining me.